friends. Greetings and happy summer. The green is fully upon us now, at least here in Wisconsin, and we're gonna go eat some today. <laughs> we wanna bring you along and convince you to have some wild green foods with us. We're gonna show a few of the wild edibles that we're gonna put into a dish at the end called horta, which we'll show you how to make. Mm. And we wanna talk a little bit about why it's so important to eat and forage green foods. A lot of you are already quite avid at doing this. Some of you have dabbled and some of you probably never have, but we wanna encourage you whatever level you're at to get out and eat more green things from the wild every single day. There's the fact that the stuff is free and you probably have also heard that it's nutritious. Here's the thing though, it is ultra nutritious. Like an Olympic athlete. Super yeah. duper ultra nutritious. <laughs> yeah. When we can get our forest monks to forage, and granted it can be tough because we're so used to our food just being kind of handed to us. But when we can get our forest monks to start to forage, they will notice a huge difference in their mental clarity and how their body feels and their energy levels because of the nutrition that comes from these plants. So what's going on is that there is soil. Mm. And soil is what makes a plant a plant. We've been listening to Dr. Chris Nichols a little bit lately on the Green Dreamer podcast, an awesome podcast. Very highly recommended. It's really interesting it. and intriguing. Yeah. Uh, let's leave a link in the description. Okay, Try sounds good. That. We'll do our best. <laughs> And she's explaining the vital importance of soil. Mm. And her research and others' research is showing that this, the plants that we eat, that we get from the grocery, even if they are organic, they are coming from soil that's pretty stripped down of its nutrients. So it might have some macronutrients. We're putting with our fertilizers, we're putting certain things in there that are gonna help the plant to grow and produce its fruit or seed. But the nutrition profile in there is uh, skeletal compared to the flesh out nutrition profile it should have. Mm, which of course directly translates into what our own gut microbiome uh, has in terms of health and elasticity, all of the like things that make us strong, um, that comes from our soil. Mm. Now, of course, it's not true that you can't find fruits and vegetables and things that have been grown maybe by a farmer down the way that you know that is totally clean and they really care about the soil, the health of their soil. The farmers markets, a lot of times those people really, really care, CSAs, but you'll be almost guaranteed to have a really, really, really great nutritional value from gathering wild food. I did a video way back when, some of you may have seen it. I go out into a soybean field and I pick up the gray dust that passes the soil. Mm. And I walk 50 meters into the forest. And in the forest, there's this black, rich soil coming up. Very short distance. But what's happening in those two environments is completely different. In a, a wild environment, plants of different types are getting to grow. There's a diversity of plants and there's mycorrhizal fungi down underneath mm -hmm. there that are helping the plants to assimilate different micronutrients. Without those, we're just not going to get all the goodness of, of plants. And for some of us, if we've never eaten wild plants or plants from a really, really soil healthy farmer, we may have a complete dearth of these nutrients in us and not even know how ungood we're feeling because it's just our normal. Yeah. Just, oh, you know, kind of low energy all the time and my mind's kind of muddy. And that's just the way I am and life is. It could be that you don't have some of these basic nutrients. When they come up in these plants, it's not like taking a vitamin pill either. Mm -hmm. those, are, those vitamins are isolated, minerals are isolated. Here, there's so many different chemicals all interacting synergistically. Syn yeah, synergistic, that's the yeah. word, basically, is all these systems interacting together. And we have been finding more and more that to pull something out and then try to add it back in, it's just not nearly as beneficial to us and to the environment as taking something in its complete holistic form. A fun thing that Dr. Nichols was pointing out is that part of our obesity epidemic 
might be that there's recent research showing that our bodies, our satiety, our feeling of fullness, has to do with how much nutrition comes in. Mm -hmm. So when I eat a Big Mac and I'm just eating all these calories, but there's no nutrition in it at all, my body keeps saying, hey, bring in more. We the need brain more nutrition. Is like, we don't have the, the nutrients that we need right now. Send us more. And of course, that can happen even when you're eating fruits and vegetables. If they're coming from a depleted soil, literally there is no nutrition in the soil. It can't go into the plant and it can't go into your body. So wild foods for sure are going to help you with that. Hopefully this has convinced you to give wild foods a try if you haven't before or to up your percentage. And that's what our 100% project is about all here is trying to up that percent. And if you just up it 1%, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do that today. You're going to feel much different. And of course, this is free. Come along with us and we are going to look at a few plants that you can add to your diet right away that probably live right around you. Wow. So we've got a whole bunch right here. Lots of wild edibles <laughs> right in this area. Of course, there's the strawberries, though. I don't think we'll put the leaves in. We've got plantain right here. Um, I like to get the little ones. Now we also have pine pollen all over everything, so we'll have to give these a little bit of a wash. So pine pollen, that's its own oh, special medicine. Yes, very, very good. I'm just noticing that it also rained and there's some uh, sand on all of this too. Yeah. So we're going to collect some of these plantain leaves. Good. Let's get up close and personal here. So hopefully this is going to focus in. We've got these long straight veins through there and a dip. See how that's U-shaped? Water could channel right down through there. Here's the back, those really prominent veins. And on the plantains, you can pull those veins out. They're long and stringy. That's going to be another clue that you have the right plant. They're going to grow in rosettes like this. We've got some dandelion in here and other things. They have that nice kind of pink down that middle part too. And these are the plants that you might know they're going to get a long stalk with all kinds of little beads on it. And I don't think we have any of the seeds up yet or flowers. So we just are going to have to take a look at it like this. A couple of things to remember if you're new to foraging is try to get things clean. Don't pick stuff that's all dirty. Again, this that's, is okay that's because super this small, is though. Yeah, and this is actually pine pollen. It's perfectly edible, mm -hmm. so no problem with that. But if there were leaves that were down here in the sand, probably not going to pick the ones that are really down there in the sand and dirty. Plantain is one that doesn't hold. <laughs> it's well, this is kind dirt of very dirt. well, but yeah, here's an example. Yeah, so it might leave that one behind. This was good because a lot of plants have variation. See how kind of it's almost ragged on the edges versus kind of a little bit yeah. even this one has a little bit of that but less so i often think of plantain like as smoother very but smooth. it is very different mm -hmm. from with, plant to plant with all these plants get a good id book so you have a secondary way to id it but once you get to know a plant like this it's going to be unmistakable oxide daisy oxide daisy this is going to have a beautiful flower. A lot of them are out right now, but not back here because we're a little bit more shaded and foresty. It's going to be... It's a classic daisy with the yellow middle and the white petals around it. Yeah. Oh, really? And these leaves, the flowers, are all edible. Take a look at those leaves. They have a very distinctive shape to them. I'm going to eat one. I'm going to be bigger down here. What do you think? Tastes like pine pollen. No, no that's funny. Um, I would think it's not tart at all. It's very sweet. Yeah. And it has that nature flavor. It's like you just, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explain that flavor. But it's like if you like black licorice and there's these little like black licorice candies we have and you put that in your mouth, it feels like I just take took one of those out and I'm just eating something else afterwards. Really sweet. Hmm. How do you identify this, Mirabelle? You always have unique ways to... Oh! Waves! Like if waves. you tilt the oxide daisy leaf this way... Wave, 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 mm -hmm. wave, wave. 
This is Woods Roll, super yummy, and it's very tart. Um, mo it, most people would mistake it for clover because um, you they think that it looks clover has heart-shaped leaves, but really they don't. They have very rounded leaves. But Woods Roll has that perfect little heart. Heart-shaped leaf. You can see the yep. yellow flower there. Okay. We've got a fuzzy stem, and these are super sour really really delicious a kid favorite and they can be added to the horta for a nice little sour bite or you can add them to a super stew and delicious that's the clover mm -hmm. I was... there's clover cool you see quite different it's very rounded but it's still quite different here's our gathering basket so far you can see the plantain you can see the wood sorrel you can see the oxeye daisy Remembering that greens are going to cook way down, so gather way more than you think. It's fun to do anyway. Dandelion. You guys all know dandelion. <laughs> Bright yellow. Yeah. Again, there's going to be a lot of variation in these leaves. Some are really like dragon's teeth. Uh -huh. Others are going to be much more rounded. I don't see any examples okay. right here. Little childhood thing. Look at who we're working with. <laughs> I'll put you back. We saw them yesterday. <laughs> and Alexa. Dandelions are kind of famously bitter. Yeah. If you get the younger ones, they're going to be better. But remembering, when we steam these down for Horta, they're all going to lose a lot of that bitterness. Plus, bitter is really good for you. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a kind of a tonic for your system, and is really something we should get in at least little doses in our lives. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult to identify before it gets its flower. Its flower is very distinctive and we have this beginning of it right here. It's going to grow a long, tall, segmented to me, kind of flower. When it start, first starts, it looks a little like a pine cone to me. Yeah. Now, this is a super healthy plant. We're going to see that the stem is kind of ridged, squarish, opposite leaves. And what's the flavor like there, Mirabelle? Um, doesn't really have a flavor, but the texture I feel like might be a little chalky afterward. Mm. Now when we learn this plant, this is one I'd prefer for people to, of course, check out in an ID book, as we said. But wait for those flowers to come up, and then you'll have a really positive ID. This looks close. And you can go from there. Yeah, you know, a lot of plants that you'd mistake this for would be various plants in the mint family, and they're going to be edible. But just so that you learn this one 100%, once you get to know it with that flower on top, you're going to start to just, these leaves will be perfectly recognizable. But Wait till you get that flower on a little bit later in the summer. This is a common, common kind of disturbed ground plant. You should find it all over and very, very nutritious. This is oxide daisy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, also there's mustard. Oxide daisy. I love that. Let's go do the super This is the red wood swirl we were talking about earlier. It comes in a wide variety from the green to just having a little bit of this coloration and here mm -hmm. it's very vibrant and <laughs> very, very. kind of purplish yeah. red. But to me it doesn't change the flavor at all. <laughs> yeah. The sea of mustard. Mustard plant. <laughs> so mustard, when you learn to identify the mustard family, you open up a whole wealth of green yumminess. Some of them have really strong flavors, others are pretty mild and everything in the mustard family is edible. So you've learned that family, and you, again, you've got a whole range of things. You can notice here we've got four petals on the flowers. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And Mama? this one, we've got kind of a spiky stem, fuzzy stem, and look at these leaves. There's kind of a real distinctiveness to the mustard leaves. 
if you look at watercress and other mustard, you're going to see the same formation. The final plant we're going to hit today is called sheep's head sorrel. Head sorrel. So show us that leaf there. Like a sheep's head, right? The two little ears. Yeah, but I think it looks more like a mouse's head yeah. <laughs> to me. Um, it has pretty much the same flavor as wood sorrel, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, super, super sour. It this does one's have even sorrel, as you can see, more I'm delicious, would you say? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I think I look wood, like wood sorrel better. <laughs> well, <laughs> But these leaves are definitely bigger and more robust, so they're going to give you more of that nice sour flavor um, for your for your gathering, let's say. Here's the when it goes to, to seed. Yeah, now you're going to see these flowers and seed heads, and they have an orange tint to them, kind of orangish red. You'll see them on the roadside. Oh, and big, huge your clusters. Oh, they're yeah. like, what is all that rusty orangish red out there? And that's just hundreds of these guys Are all together so you know what i mean i like the leaves better but let me try can i just bite into yeah, it yeah go for it what do you say um more woodsy flavor <laughs> looks like storms coming over okay so we are gonna head in and turn this into a horta mm. Woohoo! horta is so good guys here you go babe okay what do we got Horta! Well, ingredients for Horta, we're going to start cooking it now. <laughs> All right. What do we do first? Uh, I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do first? We're going to steam it. So we're just going to do it in a real simple way. We're going to use our little induction top here in the yurt. We're going to put a little bit of water in there and put the greens right on top of that water. We're going to do about half a cup of water, just enough to steam it. And our greens can go right in there with it. Okay. We're just going to steam it a little bit because we don't want to overcook them. Top goes on. Top goes on. <laughs> <laughs> this is about what we want it to look like. You can stir it once. It doesn't have to be really steamed. See how much that cooks down, so this is just going to be a little bit for all of us. We'll leave it in there for another minute. It's been in for a total of three. Tip. Add lemon juice. Okay. So we're going to squeeze some lemon on there. Nice. Start with that. Some olive oil. Use a good, high quality olive oil, you guys. Remember that not all olive oil is real olive oil. And if you're just using it for flavoring, it's really gonna pay to buy something that's a little bit more real. Salt? Salt. Sprinkle some salt over the top. Mix it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can do it with your hands, or you can do it with, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be so barbaric. So rewild it. <laughs> and olive oily. <laughs> so lemony. So salty. So olive oily. Perfect. Mommy, you wanna come try? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do you like it? Yum. Tons of nutrition. Mm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching my friends. Try out Horta yourself. Totally do it. It's super good, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what wild edibles you're gathering in your area. And we will also be leaving a, some links and, and brief descriptions of each of the plants down in the description of this video. Love to you all. Yeah, bye. Definitely try it out. Super delicious.